We're here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018, looking at a very shiny airplane that seems to be lacking an engine, but there's a reason for that. I'm Dan Johnson, talking to Nick Vanensteel, who is going to tell me a little bit about your Ryan replica project. So first of all, let's start off with what made you pick this concept to begin with, and then we'll get into a little of the detail. I was born in the wrong decade. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's just something that um, I picked up an Aerocrafter when I was just a kid, and I would look through the Aerocrafter at pictures of airplanes, and, and among many others, this one stood out. Um, so I just I feel that the, the market's ripe for it, and I hope that people want it as much as I did when I was a kid. So, But it's not just a matter of you wanting something, you want other people to have access to it as well while oh, you're yeah. building this airplane. Oh yeah, absolutely, and you know that's, that's kind of the basis of everything we've done here. We've, we've taken the plane and we shrunk it down 5%, so it's 95% scale. Just 5%? Yeah, just 5%. Oftentimes these things are 70 or 80% scale, mm -hmm. you're 95. Mm -hmm. Why? Just 5% because that allowed us to chisel 300 pounds off the empty weight. Oh. Pretty and, significant weight savings. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, it's uh, a case of one thing leads to another. So we get rid of the Manasco or the, the, the larger engines that had to power the original and we're getting to the modern engine options such as the Rotax or the D-motor uh, D-motor six cylinders. And you have modern engine options that weigh 100 pounds less. Ah. And so that small 5% on the structure takes up the rest of that 200 pounds. So this airplane's non-aerobatic and by doing the that... The original was. The original was. Okay. So by taking this airplane and reanalyzing it for a different limit load, we were able to chisel off even more weight. Well, and you were able to analyze it in ways these fellows were never able to analyze it. This was made in the days of slide rules, I'm guessing. Yes, and you know the thing is, is to Ryan's credit, they what they did in 1934 was nothing short of phenomenal. 1934, is that when this aircraft, the, the, original, the original, not this one of course, but the original was designed in 1934. Correct. I mean, Correct. think about that, that's only 30 years after the Wright brothers slew that wooden yeah. canvas thing they yep. flew. Yep. And Pretty it's, amazing. It's nothing short of amazing. And a monoplane in its day, mm -hmm. at that time, Time, fairly unusual too. Mm -hmm. The fuselage construction was pretty much state of the art at the time, uh, but they they used primitive construction techniques in the flying surfaces. So that's such as well back then what was considered um, outdated would have been the the fabric. Everyone was trying to go monocoque at that time. Ah, okay. And so they have the fabric flying surfaces, and that's what I think is so interesting about the ST. It's where state of the art meets proven and time tested and it's it's almost Victorian. It's that exact <laughs> point where form meets function. And so Ryan really came up with just an airplane that was instantly going to be a classic. And by not, so you're saying in the day they wanted to cover everything with metal because that was a new thing to be doing yes, at that yes, time. And yes. he said, well let's just cover it with fabric, we know that and it's a lot lighter. Yeah. And, we basically took the airplane and, and redesigned it from the ground up. Externally, it's exactly 95% scale. We have original blueprints and we use those to get the proportions oh, just right. Yeah. An extremely complex airplane to build and you don't realize it until you start looking through the drawing. The thing we wanted to do when we redesigned this was take uh, all those complex items and make the airplane simple. So this airplane, compared to the original, is extremely simple. Is it? It's extremely simple. We got rid of the drag anti-drag wires, and we used a drag truss instead. So this wing, you can actually stick on a table and have jigged up in a day. Oh, is that right? Yeah, no. and it's very easy to build. All you do is you trace the wing out on the table, you pin it down with a couple of, of 2 by 4 blocks um, with screws, and you just make sure that you keep measuring things. Uh, the way we have it designed, you can stick some popsicle sticks in here, and that gives you your spacing. I see. You just okay. pull the popsicle sticks out, and your rib is where it goes. I see. So this airplane, again, is all hand-built. The kits are CAD cut, computer cut, ah, okay. CNC cut. Yeah, you're talking about things like these ribs and whatnot, then? Yes, yeah. It's an interesting material in here, too. It looks almost like, kind of like corrugated. Yeah, yeah, this is honeycomb aluminum. Okay. It's a 5052 skin with a 3000 series internals. So it's naturally corrosion resistant, but when you peel it apart, you can see how they assemble this is they put the epoxy, the adhesive on both panels completely, and then they sandwich it. So that epoxy on the inside is a natural corrosion inhibitor because it's covering everything. Uh -huh. Okay. 
the backbone of the airplane, we'll start with that, is a steel ring, and that's something we manufacture in-house. The, the wires attach to it, the strut attaches to it, and all the landing gear attaches to it. That unit's welded up fully, and then it's sent out for heat treating because there's so much welding that has to be done to it. We want to relax everything. So that's the backbone of the airplane. All the rest of the bulkheads are simply aluminum stampings. Okay. So, and we do that in-house. Goal was to make it simple. Well, it sounds like you did that and, then. And <laughs> that was my confusion. Yeah, <laughs> and, and relatively inexpensive too. Um, we we estimate that somebody can really splurge on a kit and have it under under seventy under seventy five thousand in the air in the air yeah Painted and that's engine instruments, new engine instruments depending on just how much of all that you put correct, in of course correct so you're going to talk to people about new D motors or new Rotaxes because that's something you could just obtain and sell to them it's easier yeah. it's easier and it's it's what the airplane's built for realistically uh, that whole engine category that whole class of engines. So this is, uh, because it's a kit and because of what it is, obviously this is not going to be a uh, FAA approved light sport, but it's in the light sport range Correct. of weights. Correct. And what kind of speeds, and give me some ideas about what you expect out of that. Well, right now at the full gross weight, we're expecting the stall to be right at the LSA limit of about 45 knots. Okay. Um, I don't, I'll be completely honest, I don't trust our, our, our simulations for the high end speed because it's saying it's going to be really fast. We're talking about 120 knot cruise. Okay. Sure, you're going to sell this as an exper experimental amateur build. Correct. And what kind of uh, construction time, we've talked a lot about the materials, but what mm -hmm. kind of construction time would you think would be involved with this project? I'm, I'm estimating anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 hours. Okay. The biggest challenge is getting the fuselage skinned. Once that's done, the, the wing is straightforward, the tail, the tail um, surfaces are straightforward. And surprisingly, the biggest thing, the time-consuming thing I've learned is fabric work. Mm. This is the first time I've ever done fabric work, so I'm sure anybody else here could have told me it would have taken forever, but it did. It took forever. Well, we actually have a pretty comprehensive kit. We have two phases. The first is the fuselage and landing gear kit, and the second is the flying surface and finishing kit. So in the fuselage and landing gear kit, what you get are all the weldments required. Um, you weld them? We weld them. The, okay. The builder does not have to do any welding. No on this. welding at all for the no builder. No welding. Okay, great. Nope. So the yeah, the fuselage comes with all the stamped bulkheads and the cut skins. The wing kit's going to come with all the ribs. Um, I should call it actually the flying surface and finishing kit. All the ribs, the spars, everything for the wing, everything for the tail surfaces, and then the interior, the upholstery, and the windshield. Somebody said yes. You're not done yet, but when you're done, when do you? Th how long would it? Be before you can supply the first kit. Okay. Right now we're almost ready to start cutting pieces. Okay. And by almost ready, I mean we have the CAD stuff almost completely done. There are a few things we have left to do in the CAD model, um, but we are pretty much ready to start cutting parts, but we will not do that until we have the airplane test flown. Okay. And when is that Which will likely be, to be? Will be first quarter of 2019. Okay. Okay, great. Well, uh, I peppered you with a lot of questions here. Why don't you give us a web address where people can find you and ask some more questions okay. or maybe get in line. All right. It's uh, TimberTigerAircraft.com and you can also find us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TimberTigerAircraft. Very good. All right. You can find lots more. Not about this yet because it's not there yet, but I'll have it later. Meanwhile, lots of other aircraft in the affordable aviation range available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Nick and myself here at EAA AirVenture.